Okay, hello internet. Uh, this video is uh, made by request um, by a member of the uh, Electronauts, Electron uh, Owners Forum. The question was, what if you had a file with a bunch of uh, sample hits in it and you wanted to uh, cut that into individual um, files? So uh, uh, first things first, uh, I'm using Reaper. Uh, reason I'm using Reaper instead of Audacity is because um, Reaper ref respects the 24-bit uh, business here, so you get uh, 24 and 44, which is, um, you know, nice. It's a feature of the Octatrack. It'd be a shame to record something quiet, or rather at 16 when you have 24, unless that's what you want. Uh, you can resize the screen in Reaper like this. Uh, just grab the corner of the scrolly bar. The other thing that's super useful for getting around is uh, shift up arrow zooms in, and shift back arrow zooms out, or down arrow rather. So if, for example, you want to get a real close look at this thing here, make it real big, then you can use the plus key or grab that bar down the bottom. And you could literally sit there and hit the S key and chop that thing and uh, you know do that all day. I think there's like 20 some odd uh, samples on this and I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, the other thing you see here is these little fadey jobbers. This is how Reaper fades in a clip and out a clip. And it's putting this here at 0.0 six I think was uh, where it said it uh, here control Z control Z what is it 0.06 and uh, that's just their way of telling you that if for some reason this clip was chopped at a non-zero point they're gonna fade it in so you won't get a you won't get a bump uh, this is a nice way to undo you click up here and you click uh, where was I probably here no oh, yep, there so um, Actually, I'm going to undo some more all the way back to before I cut these. We'll zoom back out. So one way you can um, cut clips in Reaper is you can hit the tab key and it moves your cursor to the beginning of the next what they call transient. So when the sound, start, sound starts and then you can hit the S key and that breaks it for you and breaks it for you and breaks it for you. And then um, you'll get these individual files. Super handy. If you have a bunch of files, maybe um, maybe you want to do it a different way. Also, um, you can't, or at least I don't know if, I suppose I could find out, but I don't know if you can set the values on how the transients are determined. Um, so you might end up with a frustrating situation like, oh, I don't know, that one, where, see, I'll hit the tab key once, whoops, I'll hit the tab key once, and then I'll hit it again. And see how it moved just a little tiny bit? And uh, I don't know if there's a way to adjust how uh, Reaper figures out what your transients are by using that method. However, over here under item processing and then dynamic split, you can set options. And the options I'm setting are when the gate opens, uh, your minimum slice length. So for example, uh, by setting a minimum slice length, it'll never say, okay, these, these, this must be a slice because that's not a quarter of a second. Uh, so this is like half a second, quarter of a second. You have to kind of experiment around to see what the right length for you is. Um, I forget what beat I recorded these at, but I bet this is going to be a good start. This gate threshold, basically how loud is it before we consider uh, that the start of a new sound? You can turn it all the way down to 60, and I actually didn't get the result I was expecting, so I bumped it up to negative 55. This uh, hysteresis setting means that it will, it will consider the sound open when it goes above negative 55, but then when you have the hysteresis value set, it'll have to go to negative 55 plus the hysteresis to be considered closed again, the gate to be considered closed. So um, you'll have to play around with that because I'm not going to be able to explain that in proper English. The uh, action to perform here is so split selected items. It's just going to put a chop in there. You could probably do other stuff there, but I never had to. Um, if I had selected this at transients business, that's my dog in the background. If I'd selected at transients, you can choose uh, other methods um, to uh, find how uh, to select the, the next clip. I've never had to do that. Uh, I did play around with it. It didn't get me anywhere. I'm sure there's a right way and a wrong way to do this, and uh, I'm doing it the way that worked for me. Um, so I just uh, hit OK there. And you can kind of scan it, and this one looks like it's going to be a mess. This is really literally two samples running into each other. Three samples running into each other. I'm not going to worry about that. 
Um, you can see the little cuts there where it made the uh, made the edit. I'm just gonna go through and pull out things that look like they're gonna be a pain. I don't know what happened with this one, and uh, since I'm not gonna use these files, I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so I'm hitting the minus key to zoom out. Uh, next step. I think the next step would be to normalize all these. So uh, if you hit the right mouse button, that'll select them all. You can also just do a control A. Um, now I didn't get to show you a thing, but sometimes, for example, when you process one, even though you set that minimum sample length, uh, you'll end up with like an extra little cut there where you didn't want it. Like maybe uh, there was a little break here or a stutter and this one would get cut in half. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it in half for grins here. So now I've got two. If you decide that that isn't what you want, you can do heel splits. Uh, you can do a better job of that than I did. I'm going to undo. There we go. Wait a minute. One more. There we go. You can do heel splits. Now I'll stick them back together into one file. Um, there you go. So the next thing I would do, and uh, you know your mileage may vary here, I'm just zooming these back to the normal size, is I'm going to normalize all these items, which I think is Control N. No, that's new. Okay, I had to look that up. It was right in front of me, but it is. Under item processing, you probably saw it before I did. Um, item processing, normalize items. And uh, the reason I normalized them after I did the split is because if you do it before you do the split, then you get uh, all of them normalized to the loudest thing. The whole question of normalization is a topic for another day. It's kind of a religious debate. You don't have to do that step if you don't want to do it. It's OK with me. Uh, one of the things you will see is uh, sometimes you'll see like the end of a thing here. Just keep your eye on the meter here. I'm going to play the hit. I'll get rid of this. Play the hit. And you'll get another little tick there. And I have played around with different settings of that um, negative 55 decibels, that uh, open gate business, and I haven't gotten this right. There's also a pad, I think, where you can start adding some number of milliseconds to the beginning of these things. And I've never come to a happy place with that either. So my solution for that is after I normalized, I select these all, I grab a thing, you fade them out a little bit, and you go make sure that wasn't a huge mistake. It looks like it's not a huge mistake. And problem solved. Oh, uh, sorry, I did that wrong. You select them all. You hit Control and Alt on your keyboard. And then when you fade them, it fades them all. Got it? All right. So that's that. Uh, didn't look like that's going to be a real problem. Just looking at the graphics here to make sure the fades don't uh, impinge on the, uh, you know, the tails. Next thing you want to do is uh, you want these, like for a clip like this, for example, you want the clip to be shorter because it's not, you don't want all that clip in there. You don't want it taking up memory in your sampler and you also don't want the, uh, when you would reverse it, you want the reverse to start in the right place. So I'm going to control A to select all and then we're going to look around for this uh, thing I want to do. Auto trim split items remove silence. We want to do that. So you run it. See, it's got a little dot dot dot. So when you hit go, it doesn't just do it. Um, these are my settings from before. Uh, again, it's a, a threshold question. So uh, this is saying when the sound is quieter than negative uh, 50 decibels, go ahead and give it a trim. Uh, here's a pad. This might be what I was thinking of before. So this uh, fudges it for three milliseconds in either direction. Here's another, make clips no shorter than 100 milliseconds. 
Uh, so if you have a clip with like a little bump in it, um, it won't get cut into two. Split and keep silent areas. You could also just say split and remove, but I'll keep the silent areas just so we can check our math. Yada, yada, yada. Hit go. Hit go. Let's see how we did. Here's one, here's one, here's, whoops. Here's one, here's one. These look okay. Uh, we could do a closer inspection, but uh, they look okay to me. Oh, by the way, these are drum hits off of uh, Electron A4. Uh, I know they've got their new drum machine coming out, but I gotta tell you, their uh, synth makes some really killer kicks. Uh, where are we? Okay, so we put the silence on the end, and uh, we already did the normalize. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to uh, export these into individual files. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna call this the A4 kit. And if I wanted to, we could go in and put uh, file names on here. Uh, you could give each of these individual clips a uh, file. You do this item, whoops, properties, and uh, give it a name. That's not it. Rename. I think that's it. No, I'm not sure. Not important because we're not doing it. Track name. I've got my clips one of these to make sure they're all there do a select all we do another action so uh, where did I find that action show action list and then go to batch tch file batch converter is uh, the secret sauce here this is the thing that makes the rest of your uh, uh, the, the whole process worthwhile add Selected media items, that's why we bothered doing a control A back here. Here's all our files. And then you can decide where you want to put it. So I'm just going to drop it on my desktop in a folder called demo. And what do you want to call it? Uh, track and item number. Well, that is actually what I, what, what I want to call it. Because I went ahead and named the track A4 kit. And item number is just going to be first clip, second clip, third clip, fourth clip. There's a whole list of wild cards here. If you if I had figured out where the real name field was, uh, you could just put the item name in there. Um, but that's that. Uh, for the output rate, basically uh, they came in at 24. I want to keep them at 24. Hit convert all. 30 items. That's how many we had. Good to know. I'll close this. Here's demo. Here's the files we made. It automatically named them A4 kit, one, two, whatever. Um, the size field is pretty useful because I think even through all that trouble of uh, making sure we don't have any little files, every once in a while you still end with, up with a little tip or a tail. Um, so you can just sort by size, delete these. Uh, let's sort by size again and just pick a winner. Here's a winner. There they are. That is the uh, demo. If you have any questions, um, put them in the comments, I guess. Um,